Hello and welcome to the vlog. You know, Bruce Lee continues uh, to inspire me, obviously, daily. But since the weekend when, you know, I watched uh, again Fist of Fury and I had a lot of comments about that movie and I made some in my clip. I have a few more today. Um, it's a movie I like a lot, which is interesting because it wasn't really Bruce Lee's thing, right? But even through a script, a story that wasn't his and obviously was exploiting Chinese, um, you know, icons for the public, which makes perfect sense, obviously. I would do that too, right? Bruce Lee managed to put so much through it, right? Even before he had the ability to influence movies so much. If you want to get the philosophy of Bruce Lee, you know, you, you, you watch Way of the Dragon where he put a lot of his adaptability. You, put, you watch uh, Enter the Dragon where he fought to inject his philosophy. And as Linda Lee said, almost everything philosophical you see in Enter the Dragon, he fought to put there. Um, you watch Longstreet which basically is playing himself, explaining uh, his martial arts uh, principles. That's why I'm very interested, because those I have watched again and again and again and again and again, but I'm very interested in Fist of Fury because it's a little bit like before. He had those that ability to influence. It wasn't really... He was just trying to push his success so that he would have the ability to do that. That's really what he was doing. But it's still a fantastic movie because you see his intensity. And the other thing you see is, you know, really, if you watch that movie, you realize, like a lot of martial artists hate when people talk about Bruce Lee as an actor, right? But in my opinion, it's not about categorizing. This is a fundamental part of what Bruce Lee is. You can't really separate it. And one thing about Bruce Lee is his genius to see something and do it. Like his um, ability to see a form and do it immediately. Like there's so many interviews out there that I have watched over the years of my life where people say this thing, like Bruce Lee would come into our school he would see us do something, has nothing to do with his system, and he would do it right there on the spot better than we were doing it. And it's not that you have to think of Bruce Lee as a genius, because Bruce Lee worked really, really, really hard for what he did, extremely hard, you know? But he had gotten to a point of expression, which also you can see in the fact that he was a dancer, loved, dancing and was a champion uh, of the cha-cha championship in Hong Kong, right? That he had this ability to express with his body. And so somebody would do something and he would just, it would take so little time for him to be able to do it and start even adding to it, developing it. One could say improving on it, even though that implies some sort of judgment and I'm that's not really my interest, right? But a lot of people said that. So oh, they did it immediately, did it faster, better, quicker, more perfect than we did. And it wasn't even his system. He didn't even do it ever before that day. But that translates to the movies. When you see Fist of Fury, really, you see, honestly, there isn't much there to see except that Bruce Lee is full of intensity. And his face, his expressions, his body, you know, Bruce Lee didn't fight the way you see him fight in the movies. This is very important, right? Bruce is extremely aware that he's doing a form of art in the movies for you to see. Every move he's doing is an expression. He uses a lot of circular, long movements on purpose. And he wants you to see that. He wants you to see the way he's choosing to express himself through the body movement, right? The, 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 the expression of oneself through bodily movement. 
And the other thing you see is his genius for, in, uh, for acting. You know, Bruce Lee had a background in acting, funny enough. And I say funny enough because, as Linda said, he, had, he wasn't even thinking about it. He had forgotten. That was, for him, a, a profession that he had to, as, as, a, as a child, to, you know, to do and to make a little money for his family, but nothing. And he wasn't thinking of that. But if you see Fist of Fury, really, you start realizing, you know, towards the end of the movie, he starts wearing disguises, you know? He's that, that um, old man that's selling newspapers. He's the uh, telephone op um, repair man. Uh, he, he is excellent with that, you know? And to be honest, because I'm so fascinated by every aspect of Bruce Lee's personality, right, I think about... The fact that he never got to exploit that. You know, you don't see that. You certainly don't see that in The Big Boss. You, didn't, you don't see that after that. You don't see that in Way of the Dragon. Way of the Dragon, he has one character, you know, a little bit of... He puts himself down. He's this comedic, awkward guy who doesn't know how to live in the West. And he's this a little bit more humor. Uh, but then the seriousness of fighting a fellow warrior and his absolute disgust having to kill that warrior. I talk about this in the podcast, A Thousand Exits, which is a beautiful thing Bruce Lee does for all of us, right? That expression of grief for what he has to do with uh, Chuck Norris, the fellow warrior, in Way of the Dragon. And then in Enter the Dragon, Game of Death, you don't really see... Like, I think about Bruce Lee wearing these guises in Fist of Fury, and I listen to me. I have a lot of Bruce Lee fans out there are going to disagree, but I have no doubt he would have taken his career towards more and more forms of expression. You know, what you see there in those few minutes of him wearing disguises and becoming that personality, becoming completely a different person, you can see it in the, you know, mannerisms, the demeanor, the way he speaks, the way he's, his expression he exp his face's expression. It's really a genius that I have no doubt as an actor he would have gotten to develop. Because when you are an artist, creative, you express yourself and you will long for ways to keep taking that forward, growing like a tree. In, in unexpected directions, and I think this is one he would do. You know, Matthew Bolly says this, like if you look to Clint Eastwood, right? You know, Bruce Lee, it's, it's as if Bruce Lee would have stopped because he died when Clint Eastwood was just coming out of Italy, you know, to come back to the United States and make more serious movies. Um, Bruce Lee would have taken that desire to act and express himself and tell us something with that. And a lot of that message would have been related to his martial arts philosophy, which was life philosophy. And I know this is not really what martial artists want to hear. They want to hear about Jeet Kune Do and Wing Chong. They want to hear about his fights in the... In the but, you know, the, the ex, the, Bruce, there's a reason why Bruce got disappointed with having martial arts schools, which was his dream. And he could have done it. In fact, he had an opportunity to do it. Later on, he had already closed his schools. He, he got an offer to, to start a series of uh, schools all over the United States. He would have been extremely successful with that. And by that time, he was completely disappointed with it. He wasn't doing it. I'm not saying school owners are doing anything wrong. I would love to be one, <laughs> seriously. But Bruce Lee had realized that there was something more, more intense inside him, which, which he needed to express through filmmaking. And so for him, it was very important. So where Bruce Lee would have taken us would have been his self-expression in film. And it would have been incredible to see. But the other thing I want to say, please, if you're a Bruce Lee fan, do not think for a minute what you see him do in movies has anything to do with his martial art. One of the reasons of his genius, you know, while he was criticizing traditional forms in, for, in front of Chinese audiences in San Francisco, for example, 
he could do them so well and he used them. He used them for the audition he had for um, Charlie Chan, Ryan number one son. Um, and he used it in his movies. He learned a lot of those forms from Fook Young, who was also a performer of the Cantonese Opera in Seattle. Great master too of actual, incredible uh, martial arts. And of course, we know this from Steve Smith in Wawa, who's uh, one, of the, one of the most inspiring martial artists on the planet today. But you know, Bruce Lee played with this, you know? Do not imagine for a second that the way you would have seen Bruce Lee fight if he had to close up and, and do something, a duel, a challenge, had anything to do with you saw in the movies. Don't be so naive, you know, not for a second. This is the one, look, I don't like the Ip Man movies very much, but Ip Man 4, it's funny, nobody has said this. I haven't heard this comment from anybody else. People have other reasons to criticize the Ip Man movies, uh, you know, but for me, I just don't like that they make Bruce Lee fight the way he fought in his movies. That's so ridiculous. Who would have imagined Bruce? It's like, really? All you have to do is a little bit interested in Bruce Lee to realize how he fought and how, what he showed you in the movies had no connection. You know, Bruce Lee learned, uh, learned this in Cato, in The Green Hornet, because at the beginning he didn't realize that what he was doing looked horrible in camera. And they played a prank on him and they showed him this blur. And they said, what the heck is that? People aren't seeing anything. Imagine what he did in movies as him painting, taking time. And even when he did speed, he did it on purpose to add strokes in his painting, but he's doing painting. This is almost as if he was doing Chinese calligraphy for art versus, hey, I gotta write a paragraph for my homework or for work, right? He was doing that on purpose and he did it with awareness of what he was doing. Uh, Proof of it is that when he was on stage doing demonstrations, which he loved to do to rattle the, you know, the uh, community, because he wanted to, he wanted to reinvigorate Kung Fu and it hurt him that Kung Fu had become more separated from reality, right? And he was doing forms to criticize them. Today we would hate that, right? Because we are traditional martial artists, I am. But Bruce knew what he was doing. and. and he came to Seattle with this fresh with Wing Chun in the time in which Wing Chun was seen as completely uh, revolutionary. And then he brought his evolution of his art, uh, which people call Jeet Kune Do. You know, he went through many faces, but that matter is Bruce Lee's art evolution. And he was making fun of the long traditional forms. Not that we, I actually love them and respect them, but there was the right historical time that they needed a kick in the teeth to um, go back to reality and start re re revitalizing that. That's what Bruce Lee did. So do not think when he does those things, and you know, in the movement on the arms you see in uh, Fist of Fury, none of that has anything to do with his martial art. That's his expression. And a lot of the things in Big Boss and Fist of Fury are also not his decision, to be honest, because he only had partial influence. You know, he, he still was not really famous. Um, and he didn't have a lot of um, clout. It was only after the success of Fist of Fury that he even was able to do his own, to make his own movie, Way of the Dragon, right? So a lot of things you see in that movie he wouldn't have chosen to do, but that there was a constant compromise. That's the other thing people with Bruce Lee are so naive. It's like, oh, you know, how come he's doing this in Fist of Fury? Well, because there's a director, Lo Wei, and they hated each other. There is a, pro uh, a producer, Raymond Chow, who, has, who is a brilliant businessman. Raymond Chow was great, by the way. He was, he was great. I think, I think Raymond Chow is a very interesting character to study, and he only died in November 2018. Incredible. Very supportive to the family, very close to Bruce Lee. But he's a businessman, and there's a natural tension between Bruce Lee and his desire to express himself and business, you know? Um, so a lot of the things you see in those first two movies would have been a compromise that Bruce didn't necessarily want to do and a lot of other things would have been Bruce painting painting in front of you doing Chinese calligraphy not writing fast for work very different you see 
Bruce knew what he was doing. He was expressing himself to tell us a message. And the message was related to his philosophy of life. He had this energy inside that he was desperate to give us a message. So, one of the longest clips I've made, I'm sorry. Uh, must be really boring, so I'm sorry. But I, I am fascinated with Bruce Lee my entire life, nothing new. My entire life, literally, right? And so, these days, I have a lot to say about Bruce because there's a lot going on with um, the 30 for 30 um, Be Water documentary. And also because I just watched Fist of Fury again, and I saw a lot of things in that movie that I hadn't seen before that I like a lot. All right, be safe.